let's set this up properly here. We have, again, a wall with two slits. And the distance between the two slits, we're going to call D. And then, way over here, we would have a screen, some distance L apart, and we're interested in from the center. At some point, that's Y distance away from the center, which also forms a certain angle between here. What is the magnitude of the interference pattern at that point? Over here we have the laser beam coming through and so we have spherical waves coming through. You have one beam that comes like this, one beam that goes like that. Well, if we're talking about interference, once again we have to look at the delta phase between the two of them. So reminder, we will have to look at k delta x or delta r in our case minus omega delta t plus delta phi naught. Now in most cases when we deal with double slit experiment it's coming from the same light. The laser beam on this down here it's the same beam of light because it's going so fast we're not going to be able to change one versus the other. So this is usually zero and this is zero because it's from the same thing. The only thing that's different would be the delta x. And that delta x, it's going to be this distance right here. Delta x. Let me, it's getting a little messy, so let me redraw that with that blown up a little bit. Once again, you have the wall here. This distance is D. You have one beam of light going that way, one beam going that way, hitting something way far down the line. And we'll call that theta. A couple of approximations that we do. We first of all say theta is small, once again. Or that's to say that L is much, much greater than Y, and it's also much, much greater than D. If that's the case, that's, let's just say, these are roughly parallel, and these two are going to be roughly the same as the theta there. Therefore, the only difference in your distances would be this here and that's approximately um, perpendicular as well. With that, that delta x is then going to be given by d sine theta because doing a little geometry this theta is the same as this theta here. So making this triangle delta x is d sine theta. So for constructive, we recall we need k delta x to be 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, and then destructive, we need k delta x to be pi, 3 pi, Pi pi and so on and so forth. And so rewriting that a little neater, uh, looking at the constructive case, we have 2n pi, integer multiple of 2 pi, it's equal to k delta x, which is k d sine theta, and of course k we replace with 2 pi over lambda. So swing that across. We have n pi is equal to d sine theta. And that's going to give us the theta at which we'll get constructive interference. Similarly, we can also do for destructive. Oops. 
we need odd multiples of pi so we have 2m plus 1 which is your odd multiple divided by 2 times lambda is equal to d sine theta remember though this only works if theta is small so your screen has to be nice and far away by theta small we need theta to be say less than about 0.1 radians about six degrees that would typically give you pretty good approximations one more approximation that we do if theta is small we can further say that sine theta is roughly equal to theta which is roughly equal to tan theta and what is tan theta well tan theta is y over l right here so we can directly relate y and l with that so sine theta that's equal to y over l therefore we have a further set of equation that says we have n lambda is equal to d y l so usually we like to solve for y so y is equal to n l over d similarly this is for constructive uh, excuse me for the mess and for destructive we have y is equal to 2m plus 1 divided by 2 lambda l over d and that's where you have your those are the y's for your maximum fringe or your bright fringe and then your minimum or dark fringe so noticing that the bright fringes are evenly spaced apart they're going up by integer multiples what you see on screen is something like this back here once again you have your double slit and then it comes along you have your two slits and then if you have a screen right here what you would see is you have at theta equals zero you have a bright band and then you have a bright band somewhere down here another bright band and they're evenly spaced looks kind of like a comb in terms of intensity it goes up and down up and down up and down up and down and that's what we typically like to draw and see in real life you see something more like this you still see that there's evenly spaced um, fringes bright fringes and dark fringes but there's something else going on and that has to do with the physical size of each individual slit and we'll look at that um, in the lectures but first let's do a couple of example on just the double slit by itself